Right, how are we all doing folks? As I said today, I'm going to show you how I make my uh, burper cake. So uh, in the bowl, in the bottom, I've got the burgies and the Virginias. They're already mixed up. Uh, I've just added the small amount of perique that goes into this. Um, what's the perique ratio again? Uh, do, 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 do. This is quite weak. This is only 28% perique. <laughs> and as I've mentioned before in the past, I was always told never use more than 5% of a... Uh, Never use more than 5% of Perique, it's more than enough. Um, so usually people find the cost. But I have this sneaking suspicion this is Arcadian Perique rather than St. James Parish Perique based on the price. Because believe it or not, the actual burley in this blend costs a little bit more than what the uh, Perique itself does. So uh, as always, with anything in a freaking ribbon cut, it is an absolute nightmare to mix. And it doesn't help when I'm having to lean over the uh, arm of the tripod to try and get into it. Oh, it's come around the side, it's gonna be easier. So, like I say, whenever I'm blending, it's always consistency is the important key. And this is why I don't like to blend in any more than half a kilo, because this is quite a bit, and you have to keep turning it and turning it and turning it, and if you're not careful, you end up with big chunks of perique like this, that you want fairly evenly distributed. This is quite easy to mix. Um, as long as I mix the Virginias and the Burleys up as I go, um, you generally get the impression they're pretty well mixed. It's hard to tell because they're yellow, but at least when it comes to the Perique, it's visually noticeable. Um, one day I may do a video of me making the uh, Nottingham Lace Noir, uh, which is black Cavendish and Perique. And that is an absolute nightmare to visually be able to tell if uh, you've got them mixed. Um, it's the same with the aromatic Latakia chocolate and vanilla. Um, again, look, another big, another big chunk of Perique. Must be so much easier if you're actually making uh, proper cakes with full, with um, whole leaf. So at least then you can kind of layer it and alternate the layers as you go. So again, look, more. Which um, is often when you're smoking a pipe tobacco and you suddenly have a really strong bit and then you may end up having quite a weak bit as well. Um, often what's happened, some of the tobaccos have stayed together too much in one place and it's not that evenly, evenly mixed. But that's looking pretty okay all the way through. You see some of the darker Virginia and some of the slightly more brown burly that's in there. I think that's pretty much evenly mixed as far as I can tell. Still a few pockets where it's more more golden than dark, but what can you do? Right, so I'm just gonna pause this and I shall be back in a second to show you how I uh, produce this cake in the box that I do. Um, and also, due to request, uh, I'll show you how I, how I do my test batches in a smaller, more improvised, um, more improvised press. So uh, you've watched my hands mixing this for three minutes. Um, if you're still watching, um, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I shall be back in just a second. Right, welcome back. So as I say, I'm gonna show you how I do my small test presses. Um, you need some trusty grease proof paper. You don't need a massive amount, you're only doing a small piece. Just enough to wrap around the tobacco. So I'll put the grease proof paper, uh, this is a standard 50 gram tobacco tin by the way, and this is a lid from a 50 gram plate tin. The two kind of neatly fit inside each other, it's not a perfect fit but for a small little test batch it's fine. Uh, take a handful of the tobacco, put that into your lower part. Whoops. Wastage. I wonder this uh, tobacco all over the car, all over the floor in here. So yep. Yeah. Fold the greaseproof paper over the top so that the tobacco is not going to be in contact. Put that inside there. This is why I'll never be a presenter, a blue peter presenter. And then using a G clamp, it always makes sense to get the teeth in the uh, right position. First. Right. And 
and you just keep tightening it up. Um, I don't really do it in a press this size. The other problem you have is that the lid's not quite the right size. You have to keep tucking it underneath the lid and you literally just tighten up the press. Like I say, this has had some distilled water sprayed over it already. And that's it basically. That'll do you an extremely small little piece of cake. You can go up to about 100 grams in a tin this sized, but the gap in the lid is not ideal. So like I say, I only use this for test purposes. I don't actually use it for the manufacture of any of my actual tobaccos. This is just a, just a way of testing it. But you can do this yourself at home. Take any, uh, any loose tobacco, any tobacco that's loose and you can make yourself a cake out of it and uh, wasting preciously expensive tobacco here. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, just from a few seconds in the press, it already starts to stay together. Right, so, setting up my press. Using another sheet of greaseproof paper. Let's move this out of the way. I press the greaseproof paper down to fill the box, cover the sides, no contact. Oh, I've also rubbed distilled water into the press as well. So there you see. Um, and then comes the fun part, just to get all the tobacco to stay inside. Now, as you can see, when you start, you have a lot of tobacco. And it's a bit of a nightmare. So I'm just gonna pause this and I'll be back in a second to show you what it looks like when it's full. So here we are, fully loaded. Now, I've been, this being only my second time I've ever done this in here, it's always gonna be fun. Gotta get it all tucked down into the corners the best you can. So you can't really see what I'm doing here. Get it all tucked down into the corners. Keep going, this corner's a bit more empty than the other. And then you fold it over. There's probably a much easier way of doing this. Right. <clears throat> I've got to compact it down and try and spread it around a little bit more. So you always end up with gaps in the corners. You just have to keep undoing it, repacking it, undoing it, repacking it. So, once you're reasonably happy, there it goes, fold it back up again, apply the lid. Then comes the fun part. As I say, the tobacco is so thick, you have to start partly pressing without the wood on and damaging the cedar and keep just trying to add the other bits. It'd be easier if I had more than two G clamps, but I only have uh, two G clamps, so it's not the easiest thing. Um, first time I did it, I ended up trapping my skin and all sorts. It was an absolute nightmare. Get this thing tightened up. And then once we get this to start going down far enough, we can undo this clamp. And then we 
we attach it at the bottom. As I say, this is only the second time I've ever actually used this setup. And it isn't exactly perfect. It is a bit of a nightmare to do. Okay. Do this clamp. And loosen this one off a fraction. That's it. Sorry if this keeps happening off camera, it's a fiddly process. And as you see, this end is miles off. When you see how many different times I have to reposition this clamp. And the more you tighten it, the further in this bit goes down here. tighten this up too much because it pushes the bottom end back out like I say if I, if I had three clamps it would make life a lot freaking easier but you, only, you can only work with what you've got and that is it we're now on on both sides so I can just increase the pressure now Signs crack. And it is in. Um, I've got a slight raised edge just here, so I may have to loosen and slide this over to the middle, but I shall do that later. So that is how I pack up the burper cake. Thanks for watching folks, um, I'll be back again with more videos showing you how I'll make some more of my other tobaccos. See you later, goodbye.